It is insane to say Southern oil belongs to the North. Whenever you hear certain parrots talking about the North, pack well. They are bombs who have no Aboriginal stake in Nigeria, but have robbed, lied, and cheated their way into near total cornering of the national world for decades. There are people no one should meet on waking up from bed or leaving the homestead. As Gina Achebe says, in a man of the people, there are sophists who have stolen too much for the owner not to notice. They habitually speak of the North but become tongue-tied where there are people commit genocide in Plateau and Benue and they are quick to make a lorry person bring for president aware that they would not endorse a Yoruba under any guise. They took up arms when the Lucia Gobrasenja appointed persons from the Middle Belt as service chiefs in 1999, saying that the appointment did not favor the core North. Surely, their North does not include Lokoja or Jeba, a Yoruba kingdom whose chief has been treated with scorn for ages. They speak of a learned culture without indicating what precisely this culture entails. They condone the terrorists who feed newborn to dogs. There is no country in the world that has ever prospered with the kind of ethnically insensitive and provocative structures that Nigeria parades. But that is perhaps no news. Some people have simply chosen to perpetually threaten fire and brimstone and bully others because of their God-given wealth. One lunatic openly called for the execution of the First Lady, Senator Remy Tunubu, a woman who has been married to her husband for decades, on account of a religious leaning. He was never arrested for his murderous call, being apparently a protected breed. This week, playing semantic games occurred on a murderous hegemony, Dr. Usman Bugaje, a former federal lawmaker and academic, doubled down on his claim that the North owns the oil in the South. Hear him. According to the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, the ownership of natural resources is vested in the Nigerian steel itself. The idea that there is an all producing state is at variance with our constitution. The idea that there is an all gold or copper producing state is out of either ignorance or impunity. Ask the question, you may claim that 78% of all belongs to the north. This is how Bugadi replied. I did say that all belongs to the north. However, let me explain. As we know that the Constitution has made it very clear that oil and other resources belong to the Federal Republic, yet you find some ignorant people talking about their oil. The amalgamation was between North and South, but people like Bugaji habitually use geographic geopolitical zones, the Southeast, the Northeast. When providing their infantile logic, Bugaji can't even make up his mind. He says that oil belongs to Nigeria, which is correct, going by the fraudulent law Nigeria prints. But he then goes on to equate this Nigeria with the North. So in his view, the North is the sole custodian of whatever belongs to Nigeria, like Abuja say. It is clever, isn't it, for Bugaji to speak of a constitution because it is in his hegemonic interest to do so. But even at that, his submission is utterly repugnant. If there are no oil-producing communities, then what's the Niger Delta Ministry? NDDC and others about? So the people who eat crude oil in their fish are ignorant for saying they own oil? Fun fact, the people Bugaji calls ignorant own their oil before his four years were born. Besides, in Bugaji saying that the Niger Delta people need a law promulgated by military adventurers to tell them about the oil they have owned for millennia. In Bugaji demonic view, the North owns Niger Delta oil because it is larger than the oil producing communities. But the USA is bigger than Texas and it has never sought to rob that state of its oil wealth. Oil and gas production in the state of Texas is primarily, is primarily regulated by the Texas Railroad Commission. Indeed, Mr. Bugaji should not stop at claiming the Niger Delta oil for his north. He should also claim the body, spirit and souls of the people. After all, the north essentially controls oil blocks and the southern Inasa Rock is only a tenant. But let me sound it loud and clear. A Nigeria in which some people believe that they are born to lord it over others can never work. Nigerians waited 13 years for the PIB, but when it came, the Senate under Ahmad allocated just 3% equity shareholding to the oil producing communities, while setting aside 30% for oil exploration in the North. 
The South and Nas senators who collaborated with the Northern counterparts to execute such a declaration of war on the oil producing communities have earned themselves everlasting damnation. Whatever they achieve in this life, they will end up being treated in the same way, in the same shameful manner that they have treated their own people. They shall change the communities that had borne the burden of this relation for ages. What a shameless bunch of rooks. In November 2022, the President, the President Buhari and Theost, in November 2022, President Muhammad Buhari and Theost, we are pleased with the current discovery of over 1 billion barrels of oil reserves and 500 billion cubic feet of gas within the coal money area and the huge potential for more deposits as we intensify exploration efforts. It is good to note that the adversary has now attracted investment for an end-to-end -end integrated development and monetization of the hydrocarbon resources. It is therefore to the, to the credit of this administration that at a time where there is near zero appetite for investment in fossil energy, some with the location challenges, we are able to attract investment of over $3 billion to this project. Have you heard of any exploration going on in Kolomani? like Zampara Gould, the North isn't eager to share Kolmani with the interest of Nigeria. Besides, the constitution that Bugaji references is not superior to the people of the Niger Delta who existed long before setting greedy dogs from a bloody, thirsty, rapacious and irredeemably corrupt island coupled this worthless union together. The estate and the law are, in, are not invalidated are not invalid and they must be negotiated. Over to Mori Rockboard, it will be an instructive exercise for the skeptical reader to try to frame a definition of the state and the law are not invalid, they must be negotiated. Over to Mori Rockboard, it will be an instructive exercise for the skeptical reader to try to frame a definition of taxation which does not include theft. Like the robber, the state demands for money are the equivalent. Of gold point, if the taxpayer refuses to pay his assets as seized by force, and if he should resist such depredation, he'll be arrested or not. If you think you could continue to rest, and you think that Rutherford was even speaking to a serious state. So, what they are saying here is, why didn't go talk? Why didn't go talk to this the oil we did for South now for the Nadi no staying it? Why didn't go the yanda kind of yan? All right, on this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of your day.